Ah, Mexico, full of beauty and history, and obviously some good food. Now, we've been here once before, but never to this part of Mexico, the Yucatan. Our first stop is in Merida, Mexico, and we're so excited to see just how amazing this part of Mexico really is. Merida, Mexico. And I know we're not saying that quite right because we don't have that Spanish accent that's so beautiful. They say it, Merida, Merida. Oh, I'm not gonna try. I'm, I know their ours are so much softer than ours and the way they say it, it's just beautiful. This is the first time that we've ever been in the Yucatan Peninsula. You know, last time we were in Mexico, we spent an entire month in Mexico City, which was loud and chaotic, and it was this huge, huge city with a lot of great food. Living my best life. So now we're in a totally different region of Mexico, and we're excited to see what's so different about this side of the country. Mexico City is the largest city in the northern hemisphere. It's a massive city and it's a map falls in every direction and it's beautiful but it sits about 8,000 feet up in the mountains. So elevation, the air's a little thinner, you feel it when you land and then you come to the Yucatan and it's hot and it's sunny and there's beaches and so we landed in Cancun and essentially our entire trip is going to be in this massive triangle around the Yucatan. Marinad was our first stop. And a lot of people from the states they come to the Yucatan Peninsula because they think of vacation, they think of beaches, they think of cenotes, they think of a good, good time. And we are here for a good, good time, but we're also here to see what is different and what makes this place special. Merida is home to so much culture. It's got Mayan history museums and it's got all sorts of ruined sites you can go visit. Chichen Itza is just two hours down the street from us and then just the people. So most people are booking their trip to Merida. They see the beautiful colonial buildings, the haciendas, and it's just like this little piece of Europe and Mexico. And while that's beautiful, that's sort of not the most happy side of the Mexican history. Colonialism is never great by any means, but those remnants of it are beautiful. But then surrounded by all the colonialism is the Mayan heritage. And I think what's really interesting is that visually you see the colonial buildings, but then you get here and you don't feel very European. You feel the Mexican culture so much stronger. And I think that's really interesting. And one of the best ways to get to know a city is by heading to the market. No matter where you're at in the world, we have to go to the market. Thank you. This is the real stuff. General rule of thumb when you're traveling, you don't know where to go, all of the locals. So we like markets because it's a great way to see a lot of different things, to see the locals, how they're living. Oh, gracias. Um, that was so quick. All right, so we got two tacos pastor and then one pastor tortas. So it's like a sandwich. Two tacos, one sandwich, we're gonna split share. Very excited. Pastor is like the thing. You can see it spinning around over there. It's heated. You got a fire behind it cooking. It's a giant spigot of meat. I feel very Ron Swanson right now. There's a hot spinning cone of meat. I don't know what it is, but I'd like to eat the whole thing. It's fresh. <laughs> really good. So we don't need to tell you that was really good. One of the beautiful things about this city is that they have all these different experiences every night of the week to where you can experience some sort of the culture or, or history, whether it's you know playing ancient games or doing native dances. They offer something for everybody to, to be a part of. Hey, tuk tuk. <laughs> All right, tonight we're doing something kind of different. We read that every Tuesday night here in Merida, that 
some of the older folks like to get together and dance in this park. Talking to our Uber driver, we were like, we're going dancing. And we told him where, and he was like, no. no. <laughs> To be honest, Sarah and I didn't want to come. We were really comfortable in the hotel. We were just tired after a long day of filming. We were like, you know what, we could probably just skip this. And at the last second we were like, you know what, let's just go. I think we're going to regret it. Would 100% we would regret not coming to this. This has brought such a smile to our faces, and, and it's just so fun being here, listening to the music, watching everybody dance. Oh, this is something that everyone needs to experience. that they were moving their hips. I can't move like that. These people are never gonna have hip replacements. I mean, they, or maybe they have, and that's why they're able to do that. They were amazing. This is not a lesson I learned tonight. I learned this many, many years ago. But I cannot dance. The bee spine people know how to dance. I think it's very much a cultural thing. I don't know too many people back home who are this good at dancing. <laughs> one thing I love about Mexican culture is the family dynamic. They have one of the strongest traditions of family culture in the world. It was just so much fun, but I love that family dynamic in Mexico. It's just, I don't know. It's just, I feel like that's something that's slowly disappeared in many parts of the world. Even in the U.S. right now, I feel like that importance of family, it's just not quite what it used to be these days. But here, I feel like it's alive and well. So Merida is known for being the safest place in Mexico for a few different reasons, but Many people say it has the highest level of security. They, it's very safe. You'll see women out running on their own at 5 a.m. in the morning. They call it the white city is because a white flag means peace and surrender. Oh, the idea is that they don't want conflict here. So they call it the white city because it's just so peaceful and pleasant and there is not a lot of conflict or danger here. One of the best things to do when you're trying to experience a place is the food. And we were recommended to go to a very specific restaurant because it was all about the Yucatan food. So tonight we're eating at Mugi. That's how somebody told us to say it, M-U-G-Y. It's an abbreviation and it's special because they have a little museum talking about traditional Mayan cuisine. You can see, you don't even come here and see the museum even if you don't want to eat here, but I recommend eating here. So far, it's been a really fun experience. It's sort of that Hacienda vibe where you've got the open ceiling, tree growing up the middle that would shade it during the day, but it feels perfect outside right now. We don't get cocktails that often, but every now and then we're in the mood for one. And I felt like a cocktail would be good tonight. So this is a hibiscus cocktail with mezcal, and then on the side, some sort of chili powder, salt, combo. It's very nice. I didn't know it was there at first, and I took a sip. I was like, there's my kick, and then I realized, oh yeah, that's chili powder. <laughs> it's very good. It's kind of got that sweet, and a little spicy in it. And then Chris got a Yucatan sangria. So far, so good. Enjoying our time. Excited to try the drink for food. Haven't really tried any food yet, so I think I can recommend it, but I can't say for sure yet. We'll see. Well, this is a nice restaurant. It's got a cool, like, chill vibe, and it's dog friendly. You have to hide them in the shadows, but no. it's still dog friendly. When you make a reservation here, they actually ask if you're bringing your pet online. So we didn't know it was dog friendly, and then we saw that, we're like, well, Kramer's coming with now. This place came highly recommended by a few different locals that we talked to, and we saw it online, a few different things. 
But I want to note that it's not necessarily geared towards locals. And I'm not going to say that nobody here is local, because I don't know that for sure. There are people around us speaking Spanish, and so maybe they're from other regions of Mexico. I don't know. All right, so how this works, it's a dinner for two. And they give you four different entrees that you make your tacos with. So they bring you this little pot of or steaming, I can feel it, steaming tortilla shells. And you make your little tacos using the different, it's a good like a sampler platter. Don't really know what all we've got here. Let's try it all though. Cool. And what it is, is it's samples of four different meat dishes. And then they bring you this little bowl of warm, freshly made tortilla so you can take the meat and make your own tacos. Tortillas are just steaming and they're warm and you life doesn't get better than that. No. <laughs> and we wish we would have captured more B-roll of this food, but the light was the lighting was getting so dark. And so there was a point where we we're like, you know what, we could try to film this or we could try to enjoy it. And we decided to enjoy it. This restaurant has this entire like museum exhibit. And there's people over here kind of caught me by a surprise that it's like a live exhibit, like they're actually making the food. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. And so I thought it was just gonna be like dioramas, props, whatever, you know, sort of like what's behind me. But no, there's like real people over here. It's so neat that they're showing you how they make the food and I wasn't expecting them to be like right outside. So if you come here, just know, leave a tip. Like if you're gonna take photos, videos, leave a tip. They have a little tip uh, jar right there in the front. But yeah, this is a really cool restaurant and don't sleep on the food because the food is by far the best food we've had since we've been here. So for a nice evening out, just to give our American friends a little bit of idea of what this costs, um, for all of that, two cocktails, an appetizer, and a two-person meal, with tip, I think we paid $48. And I'm not going to say that's like cheap by any means, but it's... It was a, it was a good, nice night out. Yeah, and you could definitely eat less food than we did. But yeah. that's just gauging, that's what a good night out was here. Yeah. But not only that, we found coffee that gives back. So their coffee uses Mexican beans, and then the Mexican beans that they roast, they give back to some of the communities in more impoverished areas of Mexico. So they actually work with a few different companies. But one of them that caught my eye was World Vision. I know World Vision from back home, and it was right on the coffee bag. I was like, that's cool. And then not only that, but the coffee, I could pick up the notes in it when I smelled it immediately. One of them had um, honey and bourbon, and like instantly I smelled sweet honey. And then another one was notes of chocolate, and it, it almost smelled like a chocolate bar. <laughs> like it melted in the coffee. It smelled so good. So I'm excited we've got it back to take it home. The ice latte is delightful, especially when it's 90 degrees outside, and I have not had enough coffee today. It's iced, it's caffeinated. It's good. Merida is sort of the central hub to where you can stay here and then drive and do day trips, whether it's to the beach or to archeological sites or cenotes. And that's what a lot of people do when they come here. They station here and then they'll do day trips back and forth. And so we went out to the beach one day because Kramer loves the beach. the sunshine and the ocean. We always like to bring the GoPro to the beach because sand always gets into our nice cameras. So if the wind is really bad, I'm sorry. The locals did tell us, Progresso is nice. It's not the best beach in the area. So if you want to venture out a little farther to explore and find a better beach, you certainly can. But that's a good easy one. It was 25 minutes from our hotel. Super easy to get to, straight shot up. We drove our car and we had the place pretty much to ourselves. So Merida is a beautiful little town. I say little because it feels little compared to Mexico City, but it's still a million people. It's a beautiful town and it's sunny and it's warm and it has that busyness if that's what you're looking for, but it's a beautiful place to come and learn and experience and taste. 
And that's how we ended up in Merida. So thank you everyone in Merida for making us feel so welcome in your city and sharing a little bit of your home with us. We have thoroughly enjoyed it. And I hope we get to come back one day. I can see it being a good place to come back, spend longer and do sort of a workcation. Maybe get a work visa, spend a month or two here, just enjoying being here without feeling rushed to go see and do everything. Yeah, it's the perfect place to where if you want the city life, you can get it. But if you just want to like chill out and kind of relax, you can also have that too. Next stop for us is Tulum, which is about three and a half hours. We're gonna hop in the car. We'll see you in the next video. Go. For behind the scenes and extra content, you can head on over to our Patreon community. Otherwise, be sure to follow on Instagram or like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.